Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and welcome back to our ongoing look at the assets available in the Unity Fantasy Games and Game Dev Assets Bundle. We've been looking at assets for the last week and a bit and we're almost done because quite frankly so is the bundle and we've covered a lot of the major assets. I might have room for one more. If there is another asset on here you want to see before this ends, do let me know in the comments down below. I might be able to squeak one more in, but we've only got three days left if you want to pick up this bundle. So that's what I've been doing. I've been going through them, letting you know if this bundle are right for you. Uh, and so far we have covered Odin, we covered RPG Builder, and we covered Node Canvas. And what we are now going to look at today is Octave 3D. We're going to also have some bonus coverage here because we're also going to look at the Dark Fantasy Gigantic Environment Set. And by the way, the Dark Fantasy Gigantic Environment Set, this is mostly just 3D assets. So you could use that in Unreal Engine, in Godot, in CryEngine, or whatever engine you want. Generally, as long as you can work with FBX, files, uh, you can use these in other game engines. So this bundle may be of interest to you even if you are not a Unity user, but obviously the tool here is 100% for Unity users, and what this one is all about is level design. So if you need to create levels, especially out of modular assets, this tool is basically a collection of power tools to make your life so much easier. So if you want to create modular level designs using basically prefabs, you are going to find Octave 3D a Godsend. By the way, it is also uh, very keyboard driven, which is a very good thing. I do not take that as a negative, but you're going to want to grab this. This is the hotkey quick reference. Uh, I don't know all the hotkeys here, not even close, but they do make your life so much faster. All right, so let's go jump in and take a look. First, we're going to start with the uh, Dark Fantasy Kit. This is the um, demo level for the asset we're going to look with. All of the walls, everything you see here, these are... Um, available in the kit. They're basically, they're a modular collection. So let's go inside. So you can see all the pillars, all the columns, all the pews, all the randomly destroyed wood. Everything you are seeing here, these barrels, uh, fires, fireplaces, pots, pans, so on. These are all available in the Dark Fantasy kit. So it's a modular level creation kit. And now let's get back to Octave 3D to show you how um, creating these kind of levels can be made a whole lot easier using Octave 3D. So I've already installed it. It's only about a two megabyte install. By the way, if you have any problem with any of these, make sure that you go into id.unity.com, log in, make sure your organization is set up and then assign each asset to your user. It's a bit of a pain, but it's one of those things they changed with this Humble Bundle. All right, so we have it installed. Uh, now what I'm going to do is go back to the default project. Uh, this is a, an ERP project or Universal Render Pipeline. So here we are. Let's load the sample scene up. All right, and I don't need the example assets, but let's find them so that we're actually focusing. In the right. There we go. So here is the default level in a new ERP project. And I don't need any of this. So let's just get rid of that. And here we are, sample scene. Now, in order to get started with Octave 3D, it couldn't be simpler. First, obviously, go into um, the uh, package manager, uh, search for it. So it's uh, Octave, like so. Just grab it, click download, click import, add it to your project. Once you've done that, come up here, create a new game object, and empty is fine, and then add a component to it. Search for Octave and then grab Octave 3D World Builder. And when that is done, you have your World Builder object over here. Might not be a bad idea to rename it. World, yeah, World Game Object. Okay, that works for me. You're gonna notice immediately at the script here, you have this. These are actually a set of tab controls. Each one of these gives you a completely new set of objects down below. By the way, you can use, I believe it's the QWERTY keys, but it might, no, it's ASD F to switch between these different tabs right here. So here, what you're seeing is object placement. I'm gonna focus mostly on object placement in this video, but do be aware, there's also uh, here object selection. So for uh, once you've created your scene, then you've got here for getting rid of objects, basically just go into this mode and then click on them and then they're gone. And then you have control over the snapping settings. Snapping is a big part of this. Uh, this is your underlying grid and your objects as you create them will automatically snap. So now I switch back to the um, object placement mode. And you're gonna notice down here, we got a number of different options available, but the, the heart of this one is going to be in prefab. Now this is where your paintable objects come from. And this is why I have the Dark Fantasy kit installed. So Dark Fantasy, if you scroll into it, you will find assets, uh, prefabs, uh, prefab group, prefabs like so. And you can notice we have a number of different objects here. I'm gonna start with a couple of floors and a couple of walls. So let's get some flooring going here. So we'll just grab cobblestone floor. So you can notice here, a number of assets in there. Well, you've got a couple of different options here. You're gonna notice by default active categories, there is the default, pun not intended. This one is created automatically, but what we could do is go ahead and create a new one. 
called floors, create the category, and then anything we drop in here, assuming you stay with the default settings, will uh, populate into that category. Or what you can do is just drop in a folder and it will automatically create a new category by that folder. So now these assets are ready to go for us. Uh, let's go and create a couple more. So we got floor and we could do walls. By the way, if you have a folder with other subfolders in it, it will automatically create a directory out of each child. I think again, you can set that. Create category from dropped folders, process subfolders. Um, and create prefab tags for each dropped folder. So you can control over if this behavior happens or it doesn't happen. But what I'm gonna do is go into wall. Okay, so wall doesn't have any subcategories. So we're just gonna create, so this will create a new category called wall. We'll drop in wall like so. Uh, we can also drop in, yeah, well, oh. All right, door is a little bit less empty than I thought. Okay, so we got walls, we got doors, and let's just finally grab some, I don't know, torches? Are there any accessories here? Or are they in a different folder? Miss. Mm, nope, that's not it. Lights. All right, sure. We'll drop in some lights. Uh, so just bring that. Boom. And now we have another category. So we got all of these things to work with right now. What you probably want to do at this point in time is actually drop that tab in somewhere because you're going to use this one quite a bit. By the way, if you want to change the way things look, you can come in here into look and feel. So see here, we've got six tabs going on right now. I could come here and change that to, say, 10. And we could drop the scale down to 0.8. You have a little bit more room. All right, so that looks a little bit better. I actually got room for more. So let's, oops, 14. Oh, there's a limit. Okay, so apparently there is a limit. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, all right, so let's go with nine. That seems to be our upper limit. And I guess we'll go back to full size. Okay, so here you see uh, there we now have this closed down look and feel. We've got our assets ready to go. So let's start with painting some floors. So we come in here and we do floor, cobblestone floor, and then we can pick the one we want to work with. And basically, world game object selected, go into placement mode like so. You got a different, you got a couple of different options, decor painting, point and click, path or block. You can start, I'll show you a point and click to start with. So that one's selected, grab an object, and as you can see, point and click to create it into the world. By the way, as I'm controlling this, you also have control over how the object is handled. So for example, I can hit the X key and we'll rotate around the X axis with that object, or I can do Y, or I can do Z. And what this also allows you to do is I can hold Shift and then X, and we can fine tune control how that would work. This makes uh, placement a whole lot easier. So actually, let me just go back to normal. So I could drop in one object like that. And then you'll notice as I'm creating another object, it's automatically snapping to both the other objects and the grid in the background. Another thing I really, really like about this, and this is again why I told you you're gonna want to memorize those hotkeys as best as possible. Uh, there are some really cool options down here. They got cool tools for snapping. And then we do things like N, Actually, I'll showcase N later when I'm using a different piece when I'm doing a wall. Uh, but what I want to showcase right now is K. And you'll see down here, K sets the grid XZ size to the size of the object placement guide. So you see here, as we've got this guide, our, our grid in the background is useful. And by the way, we could set it up with the grid over here. But what I can do now is I can hit K and the grid is now the size of my object which is very, very, very handy. So I can drop in this guy right here, and you can see it's creating new ones for us, like so. You've also got the ability, by the way, uh, to go into Octave 3D and make group or not group things. Uh, and you can also, by the way, go ahead and get rid of things this way as well. But if you edit them here as opposed to here, it, you're gonna have to click uh, refresh scene for it to work right again. Just one of those things to be aware of. So you're gonna mostly wanna edit it using uh, the uh, Octave 3D tools, by the way. All right, so another thing that you could do, and I'm just gonna go ahead, I'll get rid of these guys, right here, right here. So when you make changes directly, probably best to do a refresh scene. You can also do things as a path, which is basically down a linear line, like so. So I could just keep going and just draw a path with my mouse, and it will create the object that way. I think it's enter to commit or spacebar commit. Hmm, I'm not sure what the commit button is. Uh, but so you can draw things in a path or I can undo that and I can draw things basically in a fill like so. And so you could rapidly create, um, ooh, 
Okay, I think I, I think I just made a whole lot of floor. <laughs> this might take a while. But as you can see, you can easily create and, and drop things kind of as like a flood fill almost tool or as a path tool. I'm going to pause. I got no idea how many of these floors I just created, but I'm going to probably need to undo this because it seems to go to infinity and beyond. So be right back. Okay, that was definitely an oops. So when you're creating something using this mode, uh, do not expand out to the horizons because uh, <laughs> you could cause problems. All right, so here we are, uh, my newly recreated scene because I got sick of it trying to create an infinite floor. I'll come in here. I'm going to showcase the walls, for example. Come on down here. You're going to see a number of different wall settings. I just need some flat wall. All right, here we go. So we got wall in place. So I can just basically start. And you can see it snaps to the underlying shape. It snaps to the grid, or again, I could hit K and rechange the snap size so that it snaps according to me. Also, you notice a little yellow point at the bottom. Well, those are pivot points. That's when, like, when I do a rotate, it will rotate around that particular point. You can control what the active pivot points are. Again, check out the hotkeys. So go ahead. Uh, let's say I think it's yeah Y axis. So I want to do a back wall over here. So hit Y. I can come in here, basically just snap, and then it'll automatically snap to the previous one, and then snap. Oops. By the way, undo does work, and basically just drop it in place. I don't know if my perspective is right. And I hit Y again, and then we can just kind of keep going, like so. And again, I could also do uh, path-based, so if I wanted to, I could go here, and then basically draw a line, and we'll create... Whoa, why did I switch profiles? I have no idea what I just did. Uh, but you do have that option right there, back to placement. Here, let's pick a different object. I don't know why it switched modes on me here, so let's pick something here. And we can drop that in place, right? So, okay, out of path mode, out of path mode, single click. Okay, there we go. So there is our doorway. And there you see, we've really quickly created uh, a really crap level. But you get an idea of how things work. Another thing that's kind of neat, let me go to the other category we did. We've got the lights here. So let's say, oh, I didn't showcase this. So if I'm creating a wall still, so grab a wall unit, like this guy right here. All right, so I'm in placement mode. Okay, placement mode right here. So here I go, I'm placing it above. You'll notice it snaps automatically to a second layer, if that makes sense. So if you're over something, it will snap on top of it. So you can create things on top like that. And the other thing I can do is with this guy selected, I can have it and hit the end key or hold the end key and it will automatically flip it to the opposite side. So if you want to snap something below, you can easily do it that way as well. Also, by the way, if you go into object mode, you can grab any particular thing uh, and you can move them, scale them, place them around. Everything does have a widget. You've got control over it. So if you want to make something go above or below, you can do so there. So we're not going to get much into placement mode. And then finally, you got deletion mode. Click and you can get rid of things basically that fast. But the cool thing, again, is you've got these abilities to do snapping onto other things. So if you come down and you're placing things like uh, lights into the world. So let's get got this here. Let's go back into placement mode. So we got the sconces we could go here. You can place them in the world like so, but we can also place them on objects. So I could go ahead and let's do a, okay, I think it's the X rotate. No. Sorry about that. Z rotate. And see, we can have them popping out like so. So you can easily place objects on other objects with the snapping. So you can see how a toolkit like Octave 3D can make working with uh, modular assets so much faster to work with, especially when you are getting into the snapping tools. And I'm getting into, I'm covering the real basics here. Uh, you've got a number of other controls in place. Again, you're going to want to go through here. So you see here, you can do J to cycle through pivot points. So again, I'll show you, it's easier to show you with a square object. So let me just go back to uh, the walls, for example, let's grab a wall piece like so. So there, see the pivot point is that yellow point. That's where all the snapping is happening relative to. You can hit J and toggle through it. So you see we're moving it to each different corner. So for example, if I now do a rotate, it rotates relative to that particular point. So, and also if the snapping all happens relative to that point as well. So see how it's snapping half steps on the, uh, the grid in the background. And then if I do, uh, J again, now it's snapping via the midpoint. This is really, really useful for um, getting things to snap to other things. And you're gonna find if you're doing modular level design, getting things to snap to other things is basically the essence of the, the process. So uh, by the way, there's one last neat feature you can do with everything here. 
is you can do a mesh combine and basically all the things that share a, a common um, material can be baked into a single uh, mesh object and then that will make it faster to render. So you've also got mesh combining tools built in here as well. And that's it. That is Octave 3D. Again, do be sure to grab this document right away. It is available. I did say I was going to cover that, didn't I? Project. Uh, go into uh, Assets and then, oops, too far down. Assets, Octave 3D docs and it's available right there as a pdf that is the thing you're going to want to memorize because the hotkeys make everything so much faster and in order to be in hotkey mode you're going to want to make sure that it's selected and available over here and if you go to like an inspector window you have to come back here and click it again and by the way once again if you start modifying things directly so you're, you're instancing things into the scene you can control them this way but once you've done and made a change this way, what you're gonna to wanna to do is come in and do a refresh of the scene, make sure that um, they're in sync with each other. And so if you have any weirdness or problems or anything, just hit the refresh button and it will probably fix it. And the cool other cool thing is you can actually save out your settings. So if you've set things up the way you really like them, uh, you can save them, bring them back in, and you're good to go. You can also do that with the prefab tags, I believe as well. Um, and that's that's it, uh, that is Octave 3D. Uh, I. Again, one of the assets in the Fantasy Game and Game Dev Assets Bundle. This one, again, there's only three hours remaining. I don't know if that's still updating because I had it highlighted. So, uh, sorry, three days remaining. Um, so do be sure, uh, if you are interested in grabbing this one, to grab it very soon. Also, I am at the end of days here. Uh, let me know, again, if there's something you really want to see covered. Right now, we've covered Odin, RPG, Node, and Octave 3D. And a lot of this stuff, again... Uh, the, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Uh, they're just asset kits. Not just, I guess, but they're straightforward. They, they just uh, FBX files, prefabs, that kind of stuff, ready to go in your game. Uh, like the one we just looked in this example was the Dark Fantasy Gigantic Environment. So I'm not going to really specifically cover those unless I can work them into an example. Uh, but of the remaining things, if there's something here you'd really like to see me cover before the last three days, I guess all we really have left is Bakery, uh, Dream Text Blinds, Brute Force Shader, Editor Console Pro, and UMMORPG, and the Mobile Tools Complete Kit. So I think the one that probably may be the most interest that I haven't covered yet was the UMMORPG, but I think I covered that in a previous video, to be honest. It might have been in a previous bundle or something. But if there's something here you really want to see me cover before this is up, let me know. Uh, I maybe fit one more video in before this ends. And by the way, there is going to be another bundle after, so if you're not a Unity fan, I apologize for all the Unity coverage, but when there's something like this and such a great deal, I'm going to help you guys as much as possible to know if this bundle is worth it for you, and hopefully I've accomplished that today. Looking at Octave 3D. It really is a power kit or a tool kit for creating modular levels. Uh, it, it does what it sets out to do, and I really recommend it, especially when you're looking. The entire bundle is 25 bucks. This one, 75 bucks. Kind of a no-brainer. So let me know what you think, and if there is another asset here that you really want to see covered, I might be able to fit one more in before this bundle ends. And that's it. I uh, hopefully was helpful. By the way, if you do use my link, you have the option of directing a portion to support Game from Scratch. And if you do that, thank you very, very much. And uh, yeah, that is it. That is another asset in the Unity Fantasy Games and Game Dev Asset Bundle. Uh, it was Octave 3D, a um, level creation toolkit. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.